uh, we're going to start television. And television was invented by many different people. Many different people, but three of the most important ones were Vladimir Zorkin, Philo Taylor Farnsworth, and John Baird. Okay, there were more than one. There's probably at least 20, 30 people involved in television. John Baird was a Scottish inventor who was the, one of the wor uh, first people to make a working television system and also one of the world's first color television systems. Farnsworth was an American inventor and pioneer and he made many contributions to the forms of all electronic television. See, the television can be divided up into two kinds, mechanical television and electronic television. And some of those mechanical TV schemes are very fascinating. And Zorkin was an engineer and he invented some of the basic technologies of the transmitting and receiving systems using a cathode ray tube. And we're going to talk about cathode ray tubes in a little bit. So let's talk about basic television. Now, if I have an image, television is about taking an image and dissecting it. Okay? <clears throat> let's just say <clears throat> that I have an image here inside this square. Now, in the early days of television, there was many different ways of dissecting an image. It came to be that most of the television in standard definition were four units long by three units tall, which corresponded to the same frame size as a 16 millimeter film. <clears throat> now, what we would do is we'd have a picture, let's say there's an X in this picture, and we want to turn that into an electronic signal that somewhere else can be reproduced to reconstruct that picture of an X. What we have to do is something called image dissection. And what that is, is we have to scan with some sort of pickup device the light coming in through a lens to determine the position on a two-dimensional surface of that picture. And what we do in <coughs> television is we start in the upper left-hand corner and we scan to the right. Then we do a retrace and then we do the same thing over and over again. Okay? Now, in, because of the early types of systems, we couldn't just do it all at once. And so when this all got down at the bottom, this first scan of what we call field one, it would end up in the, mo in the bottom and then retrace to the top and then it would start over there and then it would go here again and it would go here again and then the last one would end up in the bottom right hand corner and then retrace back to the top. Now scan rate is dependent on where you are in the world but in the United States for standard definition it was 525 lines from the top to the bottom with 480 active. 480 active lines. Because it divided it up in two separate scans, this is referred to as interlaced scanning. Interlaced is where you you go, you start <clears throat> the end of this first field, stops at the bottom, retraces to the top, and then it ends over here again. That's interlaced. <coughs> it does two scans. This is interlaced. 525 lines with 480 actives, that means each field of a frame, a frame is 525, 480, a field would be 240 and 240 of the visual lines. Half of the, half of the lines are for one field, the other halves are for the other field. And the reason they did that is because of the persistence of vision. Uh, if you're, you, you, you look at something with your eye, if something's flickering, you can determine something flickering up to about maybe 20, 20 um, to 23 times a second for most people. So this scan has to happen faster than 23 times a second. Film is 24 frame rate. Why is it 24 frame rate? Because it's, it's flashing that film with two, showing it twice, um, faster than your eye can see it flash. So this is scanning two fields, and it's at 60 times. It's 30, a frame rate's 30, 
30 frames with two fields that happen at 60 times a second. That's interlaced. Now there's another one called progressive, and the way progressive works is it just goes like this, and then it starts, goes to the bottom and it goes back to the top. It just scans that one frame so fast that you don't see the flicker, okay? But the basic principle of any, the beginning of any television system is you've got to scan a signal. You've got to scan, here's a, here's a picture. If I have early days, they had several different kinds of pickup tubes. <clears throat> One of the earliest ones was an iconoscope. Here's an image over here of something. Here's a lens. The light is then going through that lens and hitting a pickup plate over here in a TV camera tube. That forms a light, you know, a picture on that pickup plate. Now what I have to do is turn light into an electrical signal. Basically, I'm turning light into a flow of electrons. And so what they would do in early pickup tubes, like an iconoscope, is they would coat that tube with something that was photoreactive, electrically photoreactive. In this case, it was cesium, little dots of cesium, and so they'd, uh, or was a cesium oxide, and they put these little dots here, and as light would hit those dots, they'd form a charge. The light would form, make the dots charge. And then when I scan this with an electron beam inside of a tube, then that would then allow the electrons to hit this plate or be reflected from this plate, making a signal. And so scanning is just the principle of dividing up a signal, and then we have to convert it into, uh, from light into an electrical signal. That's the basis of television, scanning, converting it to electrical signal, transmitting it, then receiving it, then converting it back from an electrical signal into light, okay? So, let's say I'm scanning here from my light source on whatever kind of pickup plate, and that's producing a signal. And a television signal used to, uh, looks like this, and I'm going to expand on that, but basically for every field there would be 262 and a half lines of information. So this would be like a horizontal sync pulse right here. This is a, a uh, retrace blackout where when you're retracing from one side of the screen to the other, it's cutting off the image. And then you have 262 lines from the top to the bottom, and then another one, and then it does the other 262, and so forth. <clears throat> and so I've made an electrical signal. What I then have to do is take it and transmit it through a transmitting tower through space, and then I would receive it with another antenna and take it to a, like a, one of those receivers that we were talking about Armstrong did, you know, a super heterodyne. I take that signal and convert it back after it's off of its carrier wave into the signal again. And then what I do after it goes through amplification, I would take it to a pitcher tube. Okay, now a pitcher tube is basically an evacuated glass envelope with phosphorus on the front. And I would make an electron beam coming out of the back of this tube and I would scan it using magnetic fields. And when there was an intense electronic beam hitting that phosphorus, it would make a bright spot. When it wasn't intense, it'd make a dark spot. And that scanning of that beam reconstructed the original image. Now, that's pretty simple. I won't have to expand on that. But one thing, it's gone past that point. Um, used to be a pitcher tube. Used to be mechanical before that. You'd actually have a mechanical system and little bulbs, little light bulbs. And you'd take your picture and then you'd make these light bulbs get brighter or darker and you'd have maybe, you know, an array of those. It wasn't very detailed.
But that's the way they did it. Then they went to the picture tube. I mean, some of the very first television signals in the 1930s, they had Felix the Cat, a statue of him, on a rotating turntable and a camera shining on him. And then they would transmit it and they made it on a picture tube at like maybe 15 miles away in New York City. Well, what happened, uh, we stayed with the picture tube technology and we invented ways to have color. Okay? And I'm going to have to expand on that. But we also then went past the picture tube to a plasma. Plasma still has phosphorus like a picture tube, but we're hitting it with individual little electronic ciders to make that work. We then went to an LCD. LCD, liquid crystal. What liquid crystal does is it, it's, a, it's a plate that will pass light. If you put electricity into a liquid crystal, it will either block light or let light pass through. I can put color filters on one side of it. I can put illumination source on the other. And if I have an array of those in pixels, that light will be blocked or passed through the tube or through the um, LCD to make a picture on the other side. <clears throat> I can have LED. LED is where you just provide, provide power to a light emitting diode. You have an array of those in different colors. For color to work, you have to have red, green, and blue. And so I make little triads or little slot masks of red, green, and blue. And I mix those together. I can make white or black or any color in between. And that's how that works. I'm going to have to expand on that on the YouTube videos. And that's it. That's all I've got for today.